Hello, welcome to ArtTutorsOnline.com. My name is Paul Priestley, and this is a second of my series on So You Want to Be an Artist. Today's topic is going to be about colour. Now, if you're going to be an artist, you need to know and learn about colour. So you need to buy one of these, a colour wheel. Once you've got one and learnt the basics of colour, you can use it to work out interesting colour schemes for your paintings. Later in the video, I'll talk about how to create complementary and analogous colour schemes, split complementary colour schemes, and near complementary colour schemes. Wow, sounds complicated, doesn't it? But it's actually very easy. But for now, let's start with the basics. Colour is made up of three primary colours, red, blue and yellow. These are the building blocks of all other colours. The secondary colours are violet, created by mixing equal mixtures of blue and red, orange, a mixture of red and yellow, and green, a mixture of blue and yellow. All other colours are referred to as tertiary colours because they are mixtures of a primary and secondary colour. Now, if we look at my colour wheel, you can see I've marked the anongolous colours. These colours are adjacent to each other on the colour wheel and create a harmonious colour scheme because they share one primary colour in common. For example, a combination of blues and greens can create a calm, tranquil feeling, whereas a yellow-orange combination can create a fiery, vibrant feel. Up to six adjacent colours can be harmonious. Complementary colours are not harmonious, they are colours which are opposite each other on the colour wheel. Therefore, they, the complement of red is green, the complement of blue is orange, and the complement of yellow is violet. Complementary colours have the ability to intensify the colour of their complement. For example, a small amount of red will intensify the green in all other colours, therefore enhancing all parts of the green spectrum in the colours of a painting. You can see how Monet's used the red-green complementaries here in his painting The Poppy Field. Now, to see how complementaries work, we are going to try a little experiment. In a moment, I'm going to turn the whole screen green. I want you to pause the video at that point for around 15 to 20 seconds. Stare at the screen and look at nothing else. After those few seconds, look away and you'll notice that your brain has generated the complementary colour red. Everything you look at will have a reddish tinge to it. The effect will last for a few seconds. Here we go. If it didn't work with the screen, try it with a piece of bright green paper. Complementary colours in your painting can have a similar effect. You can use them to create a buzz to suggest energy, tension, drama, or, as in this case, in the painting by Edvard Munch, jealousy. Let's look at a few colour schemes that you can use in your own paintings. We'll start with a very popular colour scheme employed by artists such as Matisse, and that is the complementary anogalous colour scheme. Sometimes a purely harmonious colour scheme can be a little boring. So by adding a complementary colour to the scheme, it can make it much more stimulating. You'll notice in this painting that the harmony of blues, greens, greens and yellow greens is enhanced by small accents of reds and orange. You can see them particularly in the fish. Notice how Matisse gets you to focus on the fish because of that complementary contrast. If the use of complementary colour scheme is a little too bold, you can vary it by adopting the split complementary colour scheme. This works by choosing one colour and the two colours on either side of the complementary colour. For example, if you choose red as the main colour, then you would choose yellow-green and blue-green, which are either side of green. You could use the colour wheel to find a dozen different colour combinations of this colour scheme. The near complementary colour scheme involves choosing a colour from our colour wheel, but instead of choosing its complementary, we choose a colour to the left or right of the complementary. 
These two colours tend to enhance each other when next to each other and can often look brighter and cleaner than pure complementaries. In fact, if you mix these two colours together, they will make coloured greys, which can be a subtle contrast to the colours themselves. Before we go, just a few more terms you should know about in regards to colour. The first one is chroma. This simply means that when a colour is in its purest state, it is in its highest chroma, saturation or intensity. So to lower a colour's chroma, you add a little of the complementary colour. If you keep adding more of the complementary colour, you will eventually create a neutral grey. These neutral greys, or low chroma colours, are quite complex because they contain lots of other colours. But they are really interesting to work with. Experiment! Remember, colours can also have an emotional co component. Colours can have a specific association or meaning, and as a consequence can induce a certain response. The artist Vasily Kandinsky wrote a book in 1911 con called Concerning the Spiritual in Art, where he discussed the emotional meaning of colour. In simple terms, colours such as black can be associated with death, red with heat, green with calmness, etc. But remember, these associations are not absolute, because in different cultures, colour can evoke different feelings and emotion. Finally, remember that light is colour. Sunshine contains all the colours that we can see. So it is very important that if you are painting indoors or in your studio, you need to paint under natural light, because only then will you see the full range of colour values. If you have to use artificial light, make sure you choose daylight bulbs or full spectrum bulbs. Otherwise, the light source will affect your ability to see the colour values properly. Thank you for watching Art Tutor is Online. I hope you've learnt lots about colour and how important it is for an artist. If you've enjoyed the video, then please give it a like. If you want to see more videos like this one, please check out my YouTube channel. And if you want to support the production of these videos, then please take a look at my Patreon channel, where you'll find lots of interesting rewards in return for your patronage. Thank you for watching. Goodbye!